Um, the way we do things as a rule on these, it's super relaxed, super casual. Um, and we normally ask the person that we're interviewing to, uh, hello, <laughs> to um, give us a little bit of their own bio uh, rather than us just tell people who you are. I mean, I, I think the people listening will know who you are, but obviously you're John Freyer. And obviously you are known for your production work and your and your music work as an artist. So um, tell us a bit about, just a little bit about, about yourself before we dig into some stuff. Well, my name is Jordan Fryer, yes. I'm a music producer, um, songwriter, singer, dancer, actor, model. <laughs> I started back in 1980 at Blackwing Studio, uh, working predominantly with... Um, uh, independent labels, everything from Mute, 4D, Rough Trades, and blah, 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 blah. Um, then in the 90s, I traveled more around. Actually, I spent most of the 90s in America working, then 2000s back in Europe, and then um, since 2010, I guess, um, worldwide. But then again, I've always worked with bands from around the world. So, And I'm a multi-platinum selling record producer. There you go. <laughs> that's the that's the plug that uh, that you need in there. But in in all seriousness, I suspect because of the community that we're part of, people will recognise you and your work anyway. Probably a mixture of your production work, which is vast. Um, and to be honest, actually, when we first worked with you, which was a, a real pleasure a few years ago, um, when you worked on one of our tracks, you know, yeah. I, I knew you from a bunch of stuff that I was familiar with, and then I looked at your discography and was. <laughs> Surprised to find you on a bunch of other stuff that I knew but didn't know you were associated with, and then other things as well that I had no idea you'd worked on that. But I was just okay. kind of, you know, it's a massive discography. Okay, that's what every but most people all they do is they go through discography and pick out the bands they know and dismiss all the others. You know, it's like I've worked in the alternative world, everything from you know, Cocteau Twin, Dismal Coil to um, Black Metal, which was Cradle of Filth, and everything in between. So it's you know, th ethereal to black metal to industrial to uh, grunge rock. I mean, everything. I mean, it's sort of it's a perfect lead into something that I wanted to ask you. I'm, and I'll just come in from that, I think, which is whether you've got such an eclectic range of stuff that you've worked on and that you have worked with, yeah. where do you find your own sound in that as a, you know, as an artist, sort of thinking as a musician? And when you're sitting down to, to start creating, it's not like you're siloed in a particular world of, you know, where does where do you locate yourself in all of that? Well, if you listen to Black Needle Noise, it, it's a combination of everything I've worked on over the last forty years. So it's a bit of everything. I mean, that's why I'm doing it. It's it's I can do what I want when I want. Um, you know, not really being signed to a label. I don't have anyone to answer to apart from myself and the singers I work with. It's a really interesting project in terms of the collaborative element of it. Um, you know, yeah, you're obviously no stranger to collaboration working on the production end of things. You, you yeah. again, this huge catalog of people you'll have worked with. How do you, um, as, a, as an artist, have you always been a collaborator or is this something that you've come to over time? Is it just your natural tendency to work with lots of different people? What's your... I mean, as a producer, I've worked with, uh, you know, a myriad of people. But then when I was working, um, okay, so with my association with this model coil, basically, which was all uh, collaborations, um, it was very hard to play live with this model coil because you've got a plethora of singers and trying to get them all in the same place at the same time is very difficult. So that's why when I started out with my own bands, I just wanted one singer so it's easier to play live with. And that was Dark Dry Clinic and then Silver Go Shimmer and Risa Day. Um, but unfortunately, after making one record with each, uh, the singers have decided not to carry on. So um, writing music for those projects is always stuff that didn't fit into, you know, those boxes of those bands. And that's what Black Needle Noise is, is all the music that I've written that didn't fit into those bands. And because um, I spent all the time you know, promoting the band and touring with the band and then not having a band left, uh, that's when I decided to do Black Needle Noise and then just do what I want with who I want. 
Bueno, bueno. It's freeing, I imagine, to be in a position where you're not um, not tied to a specific group of people or, or individual. But at the same time, I imagine that it, it puts um, a lot of pressures on as well, I, I would have thought, to uh, to keep up the momentum when you, you're the driving energy behind a project like that. Not really, because it's like, I guess it's the same with you when you write music. You don't specifically write. Uh, I mean, when you write music, it doesn't always fit into the into the box of your band. So you have other music left over, uh, which is still good music, uh, but you don't release it under your band name. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, certainly. So what I did is I had all this music left over, and then I just decided to um, approach it in a different way. So each song is a you know is in its own universe with a different singer. It's an interesting way to work. I, I really, um, I find it's refreshing, you know, actually, in, in a lot of respects, especially when you're someone that brings a depth of experience from, um, fr you know, from your work as a producer as well to, to projects where you're working with multiple artists. It must give you, um, or I presume it's given you um, a flexibility when working with your own music and then bringing in additional collaborators you you know you must have listened to so many people's voices uh in you know and not just listen to them but you know listen to them in a critical and in a professional capacity over the years when you want to work with someone what is your do you tend to approach artists to artists approach to you uh, in terms of black needle noise do you have people you desperately want to work with and you you go to them or you're just waiting for a slot in the calendar or how does it tend to work um, if you combine all of what you just said, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, mixture. That's uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not, you know, some singers uh, I've worked with before. Um, other singers, you know, they suggest other people. Um, like when I worked with Jarbo, she was friends with Antic Clay, and she recommended him. So that's how we got together. Then I was working. Um, uh, then Simon Helm, he recommended Kendra Frost. Simon Helm from Cold War Nightlife magazine, and then she recommended Tara Bush. So it's you know it's a real combination of people I've worked with, and then um, and then also working with my wife here. Hello. Um, on the um, on the covers album. Um, so yeah, so it's a real mishmash of you know it's like the uh, the music's all different, but that's why. I, Okay, the reason why I released one song at a time is I did a lecture in, uh, in Oslo University and spoke to, like, the, they were, like, mid or late teenagers to middle 20-somethings and asked them how they listen to music. And basically, um, the younger generation to the day don't really give a shit about albums. They just like one song, you know, they, they choose a song, put it in their playlist, get bored of the song, delete it. So they're not really interested in albums anymore. You know, other people are, but that's why I decided just to release one song after another with Black Needle Noise. Also, you can just concentrate on that one singer. And I was never going to release albums until my journalist friends asked me to release albums so they could do proper reviews because it's <laughs> very difficult just to, you know, review one song after another. It's such an interesting dynamic, you know, that's... Um, <laughs> Dom and I have this conversation often or a conversation of one sort or another around it, which is I'm an albums person, but I completely appreciate that um, I also behave somewhere between the two categories. I love albums and I like working on them, but then I think about my own listening habits and sh sure, I'll, I'll listen to an album if someone gives me one, but I really don't mind if, um, if it's a series of tracks. And so we, and we've, you know, we've had the same sort of conversations about how we approach the music that we put out and that the people we work with put out. And I think you're completely right in terms of people's listening habits. It's, um, I th it sounds like you've a formula that really works, but how well, do you work? Go on, well, saying that it works for me. It doesn't work for other bands. You know, other bands mm. I talk to, it's like, Oh, we could never work like that. We've got to release albums. You know, it's like, well, okay, release albums. It's just, you know, it's whatever works for you. It's just this is the way it works for me and Black Beetle Noise. Yeah, I have fallen arguments with people quite a lot, John, about this, uh, just because we live in an attention economy and people just don't have the time now to listen to full albums. I don't, I don't think, but it's just my opinion, though, you know. Well, it, you know, with CDs and then people were releasing like 22 tracks, you know, and it's like, yeah. I've, got, I've got CDs and I've played them from the beginning and never managed to go through the whole 22, you know. 
Yeah. You always manage. Uh, most, most people's attention span is about 10 songs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. So, you know, you've got the other like 11, 12 songs that you never even listen to unless you start halfway through the album. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, th- like, I- I've, o- I've had, yeah, again, like, full on arguments with people because I like. I like EPs, you know, three songs, three songs you can listen to, and then you go back into your playlist because it's a, we live in a playlist generation, don't we? Where you, yeah. you put your, you, you, everything's in a playlist now, and it's a shame because I love a good album. You know, you, you know, it's not nice to listen to a nice album, but if someone's going to put all that time <laughs> and effort and energy into recording and the the, the studio time, the money, uh, you know, it can be better spent on either. If you're going to record twelve tracks, I think release one a month or something, you know, or yeah. an EP rather than a full album and blowing your load. We, we try not to sound too crude, uh, you know, just like just putting it out there and then that's that. It's done. That's all of your work for the last however many years out and finished. You know, it's, it's the attention economy thing, I think. I don't know what you're... Yeah, yeah but also you've got, I mean, um, when make, people make albums, they don't always necessarily make... 10 good songs on their album you know there's you know as you say the album fillers where you get six good tracks four shit tracks so with black needle noise i try to make each song amazing in its own right and uh, but that's the thing with because i make all the music you can take all the songs and play them in any order and they'll all work together yeah yeah I, i think that you know that that touches on the the sort of core failure of the album model not just for our time, but in general, is the filler. Yeah. And it, it yeah. is beautiful to have a system in some respects where there, there really isn't filler. You know, the, those awful, sometimes amazing, but often not intro and outro or sort of buffer bits of audio that sit on a CD just to make up an extra track so it can have 14, yeah. 15 tracks. And it's, I, I must admit, even back in the 90s as a kid, I, I wasn't just a kid in the 90s, but <laughs> I'm not that old. But, um, you know, I remember skipping past tracks on a walkman and then yeah. coming back to them years later and going oh shit this is an amazing track and i understand it now in the context of the album but you know what i uh it might have taken 10 years to get around to doing it and that it's uh, whilst there's a, there's a merit to that being there as an artist spending time and effort putting you know your time and effort into producing something like that and putting it out there for people to skip past it is not wonderful <laughs> yeah so, so i do uh, you know you as you say your formula it does sound like it works for, for you in particular but it's something that yeah. i imagine younger artists certainly perhaps those without someone guiding them at a label or whatever saying look put out a track a month or whatever could perhaps take heed of i think we know a lot of young artists who are still making albums right Tom? and it's and then no one's listening to them which is a shame because it's good stuff so yeah yeah it's a, and it's a hard world because you know as people say it's a lot of noise out there and you've got to break through the noise so um it's very difficult these days for especially a new band to break through it's, it's easy for established acts because they already have the the fan base but nowadays you know it's like, even for myself us to play live it's it costs money you know it costs me money every time we play we do small tours um but unless you're an uh, older act with the established audience um it's very difficult yeah yeah it, it is and i mean that's one of my questions i was going to ask you john is you know in terms of advice for for newer bands you know i get to work with a lot of young people as part of my day job who are so you know musicians or they want to create music um and they look at someone like yourself and they'll be like oh i'm never gonna i'm never gonna get to john fryer's level i'm never gonna produce this i'm never gonna tour there i'm never gonna do that well that's true (laughs) 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 i I wanted to ask you about your definition of success how do you define it like how you obviously is it being able to tour and having the money to tour or is it just simply putting out your creative vision in its purest form as black needle noise for example it's very hard to judge success. It's like, um, I remember talking to Gil Norton, uh, producer, and he was like, um, you know, I'd really love to have your discography as a producer. But yeah. then I said to him, well, yeah, but I'd really like to have your bank balance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm not necessarily working with the bands he's worked with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So is it more... So, yeah, go on. So it, dep- so it depends if you want, you know, a... a credible discography or not such a credible discography in a big bang balance 
<laughs> right, right. So is it is it is is success monetary? I guess that am I hearing that it's not monetary? Success isn't monetary to you. It's about well, but that's what I'm saying. It's it's it all depends on what you're looking for. You know. Yeah. It's like it's like when people say to me, "Oh, music's so black and white." It's like it's not black and white. It's grey. You know, because there's no right or wrong in this industry. Mm. Or you know, the only rules that are there that are the ones to be broken. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and I mean that, you know, if a young person or a young musician wanted to work with you, for example, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, a lot of interviews I've done, you put quite positive and it's lovely to have positive messages and good vibes and everything. But there's not a lot around what, you know, what not to do, for example. So if somebody came to you, uh, a band who grew up on records that you've produced or you've had a hand in and they think, oh, I want to work with John. What do you want to see from somebody and what do you not want to see? What kind of people do you want to work with and what, what, what things should people watch out for not to do if they want to come and work with someone of your calibre? Um, not be boring. <laughs> be creative. You know, do something interesting. Be unique. Um, yeah, just don't be mundane and boring. Yeah, okay, okay. So is it, so is it more... Again, again, with with Black Needle Noise and your projects, you're 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 experimenting. You're doing different things. You're putting you're bringing different vocalists in. You're you're ex- yeah. using different industrial techniques, for example. Is that's the kind of thing you're looking for? Different different production, different creative elements, rather than somebody coming along um, with a certain image, for example. Because image is such a plays such a huge part in band success now, doesn't it? Well, I mean. Fashion and music always gone hand in hand together, you know. Mm. If you if you go through the the time periods, it's always a look for that genre of music. I mean, it's not it's not so much now, but you know, there was with really, you know the new romantics with the punk, with the grunge scene, um, you know, with the uh, dance scene, um, you know, with the cyberpunks and the you know, with their glowing and their dreadlocks yeah. and everything. So, you know, there's always been fashion and music always goes hand in hand. Mm. Mm. So that's, you, um, that's, that wouldn't hold, you know, that shouldn't hold anything back. They should make things move forward. And, and it's like create, it's try and create something and not, and not go with what's already around. Yeah. I feel like you're, um, you know, I was saying before when we were chatting, you've got such a, a diverse range of stuff that you've worked with, but you sound also like you're quite, selective or that you have you know that you have been selective you know you're talking about that oh, i wouldn't mind your bank balance i wouldn't mind your discography it sounds yeah. like you've found a good balance between um being selective in who you work with but also looking for things that are different along the way is that is that true of, of your of your approach yeah i mean it's always nice that if someone has something unique you know to them not just say just bland or mundane like everything else it's like some people ask me it's like why don't you just stick to the same kind of music and then, then that would be well, why don't i just work in a factory doing the same thing every day i think it it's good to hear that you know as a musician it's good to hear that and i would hope that some of the people listening especially if we've got people listening who are coming into this world and and haven't perhaps approached anyone like yourself or anyone who does the job that you do, whether at your level or, or a different level, you know, but has never gone to a producer and said, I'd like to work with you. You know, I don't think a lot of people know what the, what they're looking for out of that relationship. And I think you, yeah, I think you're, you're saying stuff that I don't think people necessarily expect to hear. It's great. Yeah. But also, you know, if they want to work with someone, if they want to work with me, it's just, you know, email or contact mm-hmm. me and ask me, I mean, the worst thing anyone can do to you is say no. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think that's it because it was it was a it was a pitch. We we were like, oh, we'll just give it a try, and then it went from yeah. there. And I think that's it was nice to to be able to say that we've done that work and we've had you work on something. Um, uh, but I, I think you know, in, in terms of my last sort of question, you can tell sort of I suppose it's more of a journalistic question. But in terms of a project that you've done in the past that's kind of ticked all your boxes. Obviously, Black Needle Noise ticks all the boxes for you. But if you were yeah. to direct me to an artist or a couple of artists that you've absolutely loved, you know, oh, you can't love everything, I, I imagine, from the process, but but the blueprint of a perfect artist to work with, work for, got everything that you need, 
I hope there have been a couple of examples in terms of records you've worked on, people that you've worked with, uh, that you can say, you know, this was this was a, a, an absolute dream to work on. I mean, I mean, this little coil was, you know, mm. a great a great concept, and you know, we did a lot of strange things, experimental things, um, and then working with Stabbing Westwood, you know, blending machine and man to make yeah. it sound. Love that stuff. Uh, you know, make it sound like why, and you can't. Okay, between the first two albums, you can't tell what's, you know, what's live, what's programmed. Um, so that was my ultimate goal with, with uh, working with that, is to make, you know, so you're not sure what you're really listening to. Is it programmed? Is it live? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean, Stab and Westwood are a great example. I, I love that band. And I recently uncovered a, a video of them playing playing Leeds and Reading, and I'd forgotten that even happened. You know, and, and watching them play live and being able to do the machine elements, you know, very few bands can do that well. I I, I find, um, and it's something that that we we struggle with quite a lot. I mean, when when you play live with Black Needle Noise, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You've worked with, you know, you've worked as a producer for a long time. What are the biggest challenges you find, even with your level of experience, doing Black Needle Noise and any other projects live? I mean, live, I try to make things as simple as possible. Because, you know, you can get, you know, all these bands, like these bedroom bands with all their, you know, bringing all their synths onto the stage and everything. It's like, no one really cares. It's like, so, you know, I use a little combo amp and a guitar. We, uh, we either an acoustic drum kit or the Roland drum kit, you know, because then I can put all the samples that I've made for mm. the drums actually played live. And the rest is on backing track and we have two singers. It's like when it's like when I did Dark Drive Clinic, we had you know we had the bass on backing track, and uh, Rebecca's husband Ryan was playing keyboards, and then afterwards people come up to you and say, "Oh my God, those bass sounds you got from your keyboard were amazing!" But it was on backing track, so you know that's what you know people see and hear what they want to see and hear. Yeah, yeah. But no, but no one's complains when we play live because it's you know it's it's organic live. It's different to the record, even though a lot of it's programmed, you know, and you can watch our little rockumentary from South by Southwest on the black needle noise.com, um, which is now the film. The short film has been in four film festivals now. Amazing. Amazing. And it's just gone into the Norwegian black metal film festival or something. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. funny enough. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. But try and keep like, don't overcomplicate it. Like, because the more, you know, the more complicated it is, the more things can go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So, you know, it's like I'd like to try to, you know, it can also be very stressful. So just try and take the stress out of playing live you know, and keep things as simple as, a, as possible for yourself and then have fun. Yeah, I, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely bit of advice. And again, simplifying it down, I think, is really, really important. Uh, and, and again, uh, last question for me before I let Kieran uh, speak to you from the darkness again uh, to finish <laughs> off. Um, the, the, in terms of how you've progressed and developed as a person and as an artist over your career, you know, because again, people look at you and they think, you know, obviously you do know a lot of stuff, you know, you know you've been through a lot, you've seen a lot, you've worked with a lot of different types of people. What have you, what have you learned about yourself as an artist and as a person as you've progressed in your career as a musician? How have you changed and developed? It's just try and treat people how you want to be treated, you know? It's like I don't really understand all these uh, super prima donnas who basically they've written a song that people like or why they should treat other people like shit. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they're fortunate to have, you know, had that experience to write something that a lot of people like, but why, why be a prima donna about it? It doesn't make any sense to me. Absolutely, man. I get that. How do you find um, your own relationship with those people? You must've worked with people, not don't name anyone. <laughs> you must've worked with people along the way who are like that. And how do you manage okay, that kind uh, of relationship? Oh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> without, without any names, how, how do you manage the relationship with, with other people professionally when, you, when you're working? So on things, things that are so, and this is a producer question, I suppose, things that are so intimate to them that they've created and they have a strong bond with their work and then it's coming to you and you're, you're working with it. Is that, do you have any I mean, advice that other people wanting to do your, I mean, your that's, role? That's, that's another you know, weird question because some... 
some bands you work with and you know what they've written is set in stone you can't change anything then other bands are willing to take advice to make their song better but you know all i do is in the studio and working with bands is offer advice and it's up to the band to take it or not mm. i think that's a you know i've worked with i've worked with people who are in producer e roles of one sort or another who are sometimes scared to give advice when i'm and i'm like what am i doing wrong i'm super open you tell me tell tell me <laughs> tell me how to make things better and then it's also been the other way around it's good to hear that i think from someone who does what you do in the way that you do it you know to i'm thinking about people listening who might also want to produce other people's work that don't not not being scared to just say why, why didn't you try this i think well yeah. they shouldn't they shouldn't they should just come to me that's all <laughs> <laughs> it brings us towards um, um, a latter question. I was going to ask you if um, if you have any projects before I do, actually, before I ask a plug-in well, kind of question. Well, I have one question for you. It's like, why have we not done any more tracks together? It's a very good question. Uh, largely because we haven't made many more tracks at the moment that uh, that we're happy with sending to, uh, send to you. Um, but as soon as honestly, we do. As soon as we do. I, and I've heard you've been working with other people. So, you know, why are we even talking here? <laughs> well, 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 I think we've worked with some people that you've produced. I don't know if there's a, there's a, maybe a, there's a, a slide in that direction. I don't know. There's, there's, definitely, <laughs> no, we'll... there's definitely a crossover somewhere. Um, I mean, we're actually talking about potentially coming out at some point, not to do it, not to do anything live, but just to do some, to do some work um, to LA, uh, which would be lovely. Um, it's been a long time since I've been over there. Um, but yeah, there will be a time. There will be a time. We just we, we, we've got some other projects as well because uh, we want to do live. We want to do live stuff, but the Mary and the Ram stuff uh, is is difficult to do. But then we need to simplify it down. So th so I'm learning stuff. I'm learning stuff through yeah. talking to you anyway. You but, but but why what, why is it difficult to do? It's like what what you can't play. You just put on backing track and then play over the backing tracks. I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <saying. laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get we're getting in the studio on Wednesday out with Kieran. We're in the studio on we Wednesday. Are, we, are. We, should take, we should take some of this. Take some of this on board. Try and do it. No, I mean it's like I really like what you do, so it'd be uh, really you, nice man. to do some more stuff together. Yeah, we will. We will de it's it's definitely on it's definitely on a list of things to do. We just um you know, you know, you can come up with a million excuses, can't you, for 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 things, but we will get there. We will get there and we will do it because we do love doing it and we were really pleased with I mean, it was beyond yeah. our expectations, you know, but we, 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 we came to you as the band, you know, the people we're talking about, we came to you as we give it a try. We thought we'd try and get you. And then you were, you were forthcoming and that's given us inspiration in other ways to continue on in other things. So I think that there's a lot to be taken from, um, from that. And also it's nice to be able to sit down with you now as well, because at the end of the day, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't have been in touch with you in the first place if it wasn't for that. So I appreciate your time and, and also advice because for me, I'm kind of I'm still learning and I'm learning stuff from this as well. Yeah, I mean, it's any if anybody's out there if they if say if they want to work with me, it's because all I hear from people is, oh, you're too expensive, you're too busy, uh, we're too shy, and it's just like all you got to do is contact me. You never know, I might say yes. Yeah, but the worst yeah. but the worst I can do is say no. Cool. Well, we'll de we'll definitely be we'll we'll be in touch on a musical level on a musical level again, uh, for sure. Oh, certainly, certainly. I have. I think the right way to put it, I think, as well, is about you know picking who you work with, with what and where that thing that you want to do fits into your calendar and the calendars of other people. And one of the reasons we haven't approached you with some of the stuff um, that we've written is because it's still at waiting to get to a point where we want to come to you with it. And I think that's the other thing is. Um, Time is time, sort of on our side in general. I think all of us. I hope, and uh, you know, it's been a funny. It's been a funny last year or two years with COVID. Certainly, the, yeah, yeah I mean, it's no different in your in your end. And we, one of the things that was a big drive for us prior to that was we were like, let's take this thing and let's make it live. And then obviously we started working on that, and then that was like, oh shit, now we can't, <laughs> now we can't do that. And we could have been working together, but we don't live in the same city, and there were there were some things. But I was going to ask you about about the live world coming out of. I don't know actually. I'm not sure exactly what the situation where you are at is, but coming out of lockdowns and back into the world of touring, what are your intentions going forwards? Do you have do you have live plans? Are you are you going back out on stage? Do you think in the future near? Well, I'm hoping we. I'm hoping we can get down to Chile to play because we, um, 
was supposed to play down there. Then there was the political unrest, and then it got rebooked, and then there was COVID. So I'm hoping we can go down in February to play some live shows, to DJ. Um, we're also going to be in a movie, so to shoot the trailer for that. Um, yeah, we've we got a lot of stuff going on, but that I'm hoping will be the next live shows. Excellent. What's the movie? Or can't you it's, say? Um, not really. Well, it's going to be set in, it's kind of a Western set in about 1880. So that's all I can oh, say about it. That's quite all right. That sounds fascinating. Um, that's what, that's what the facial hair is all about. Ah, <laughs> it looks good. I like the facial hair. I like, uh, I like the period moustache. It's, it's nice. Um, so coming towards the, the back end, we're going to inevitably ask you what, where do you want people to go? I think it's black needle noise. I imagine. Yes. You know, what is that the direction that you that you want people to go? And if so, within that catalog, whether it's newer, older, whatever, where where do you reckon where to get in? Where would you say jump in here if you could pick somewhere? What, what, do, what do you mean? Into Explain your catalog with Black Needle Noise. Sorry. So um, if you you know, if we've got people listening that haven't come across Black Needle Noise before and uh, we're sort of saying, look, we like Black Needle Noise. You are Black Needle Noise. Go and listen to them. What's your, what's the entry point? What do you reckon? Just listen to everything. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a weird project because it's all over the place. So, you know, you're not necessarily going to like everything, but as long as you at least like one song, then, you know, I've done my job. That's, do you have uh, more? Do you have more coming? Have you got more Black Needle North yes. stuff you're working on? Good, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just finishing off a video for the cover of uh, She Talked to Angels too. Cool. Very and cool. That will be, that will be re-released um, as soon as the video is finished. Awesome, man. Awesome. That's cool, man. Oh. That's good. Um, in, in terms of other things that you can talk about, uh, you know, this is the, the plugging bit. Um, it's why I let Kieran do all the interview stuff because I just come at you with, with, with journalist questions and it kind of ruins it. Uh, what, what have you got to plug uh, what do you want to plug at the moment? Things you can talk about. Obviously, there's a movie, but you can't talk about it too much. Uh, Black Needle Noise, you've got some new stuff. Anything you're working on that you can tell us about? I mean, there's just a, there's a short movie uh, just finished. Um, it's called LA, LA, Rise, LA Rises. LA Rise. Um, I just did uh, the end sound, the end song with Lisa Kay from Basement Jacks. Um, that's just come out. That's been in four film festivals so far and counting. Uh, I, you know, I'm always working on music. There's more Black Needle Noise coming. Um, always working with different artists. Going to be working with you again. Uh, you know, finishing up, uh, finishing up a couple of albums. Uh, another couple of albums waiting. Oh, there's Stabbing Westwood singles just coming out. Um, nice. Nice. And then there's a new there's a new album going to be coming out. Um, Stoneburner albums just come out on last Friday, I think it was, because um, I'm working with the label uh, Cop International, so there's a lot of things I do with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's just never you know it's never ending. <laughs> good. 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 I think that, that, that's good. I mean, um, again, I, I don't know if you have another question, Kieran, but I, but for me, um, just wanted to ask you as well. Obviously, you've done a lot with your career, you've been through a lot. What is your message to the people that are, you know, that, that are discovering Black Needle Noise that have supported you through your entire career and have, you know, you, you you're in this you're in this part of your life now, enjoying the sun, enjoying the, uh, you know, the good life. It seems, which is awesome, and you deserve it, and it's really good to, to to be in touch with you anyway, John. But what is your message to the people that have supported you, and will continue to support you uh, as you go forward in your career? A big thank you. So, well, I just thank you for uh, you know supporting me, and liking me, liking my music, and and liking Angela here. Um. Yeah, it's just a big thank you and, you know, thank you for liking music, supporting the music scene, industry, and musicians in general, you know. Absolutely. Man. There's, there's always going to be music, whether, you know, whether people pay for it or not. There's, there's always going to be music out there. You know, there's always been music way back from the cavemen beating two bones on a rock, you know, um, till now. So m music's never going to go away. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Right. Well, I'll uh, I'll leave you with our host, host Kieran in the dark. I, to sign us off. Man. I think a it's getting very dark here, and b I think that's a that's a 
beautiful way to to wrap it actually I, and i think that sentiment especially at the moment when people might be put off from jumping in and doing stuff in this in this sort of weird post covid semi still in covid world that that we're living in um you know i think a time times on our side and you will still have time to do it and b people can always get in touch with you and i think those are really great sentiments to take away from something like this uh, personally i think it's like you when you're making music you got to make music that you're proud of you know don't don't just do it because oh i need to make a hit single and you know make music that you're proud of because if you're not proud of it why should anyone else be proud of it yeah yeah well there were no hit singles right originally the the weren't and then someone made some stuff and that's the way it should be really is you make some stuff and if people like it they like it and yeah and say so that's what I do with Black Needle Noise. I make what I make and put it out. And fortunately, there's you know there's people out there who do like it. So I'm very fortunate in that respect. I, I was going to ask you where you find the time amongst everything else you do to uh, recline. <laughs> so uh, you're 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 so reclined currently. You must have a lot on. <laughs> no, you seem relaxed. It's good. It's nice to see. <laughs> it's a yeah. We're having a day off and then uh, back in the studio tomorrow, of course. Fantastic. Where is the studio at the moment? Just out of interest, where, where are you working mostly? Um, Echo Park in LA. Cool. In a place called Bedrock. Very nice. Which is, um, I mean, there's production rooms there, there's rehearsal rooms there. Um, it's, an, it's a really nice spot. It's, it's like three miles from my home so I can walk. And it's actually walking in LA. And that's a weird thing to do, but I do. To be honest, you probably see things that no one, no one else gets to see. That's uh, as long as you feel safe doing it, or safe enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very safe. Don't believe everything you read. I, you know, I've yet to come to LA, and it's something I'd like to do in terms of certainly any future work. You know, I'd like, I'd quite like to um, do less remote work with producers and more <laughs> in-person work. You're someone that it would be fascinating to see your process in person rather than. Uh, and to work with in person perhaps someday that would be that would be nice do you uh do you do you find i assume a lot of what you do we were talking about it before the interview uh, well we we're talking about what it must have been like when oh oh you've disappeared visually but i assume you can still uh, okay that's my quite all right is, don't worry <laughs> my phone's gonna run out my phone's gonna run out of uh, juice soon oh it's quite all right we'll wrap up in a minute we'll wrap up i was right. going to ask you uh about working personally with people in the studio and working remotely do you really do you massively differentiate in the way that you treat that or for you is that is it all the same yeah, still music? i mean I, I treat it all the same but the thing i do miss about working with bands is being turned on to other music because every band's and also the different personalities and different approach it's not two bands have the same personalities or, or approach and that's what i've always liked and especially with different genres where you can take one thing and put it into another you know it's like put in square blocks in round holes all the time so um that's what i've always done you know mix it up but working with bands and then finding new genres of music or new bands to listen to which uh which i miss greatly well hopefully certainly from our end we hope to come and see you at some point or be in your vicinity yes. anyway over there and yes, uh, well, let, let us know when you're over much better weather much better weather for sure I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, do, I do love it when I'm being, when I'm over there. Although I'm always in the misery, I'm always in the rainy and snowy part. I'm always in like Boston or Chicago, but uh, so I need to come over to LA and spend more time in the sun, for sure. <laughs> yeah, come out. Well, it can rain here in the winter though. It, it does get cold and it can rain. But. Yeah, I'll just be just be like home then. It'll make us feel a bit more like. Home. <laughs> I feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but to, I... yes. Go on. So, no, no, you were saying something. Sorry, go, do go. Um, no, I'm just going to say it's nice and sunny today. <laughs> to be fair, it was lovely here as well. But I think it's, uh, you know, I love this time of year, actually. It's coming up to Halloween. That's, as you can probably tell from my general demeanor. You, you massive I like it, goth. But, uh, I'm a massive you goth. Massive know, but, goth. But I am a sucker. I'm a sucker for the sun as well. It's just, you know, I can wear, I can wear shorts and are boots. You, That's fine. Are you wearing your leather pants right now? No, I'm in, I'm in soft grey shorts, Don. Soft grey shorts, thank you. That's, uh, I'm not always in, in costume. Uh, no. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, every day is Halloween, so. Well, truly. <laughs> no, it, it would be lovely to come and visit. And I hope 
it would be well i don't know if you come over here very much anymore do you come do you come home often no, no. not very often no no look at where he is why would he come no, home at all? <laughs> well then we're gonna have to come there and see you play because i'd like to see black needle noise live and he had some play I'd rather just listen to you on there uh, online so uh that would be good <laughs> Yes, well, uh, yeah, so let us know when you come over. It'll be fun to hang out. We will do. And I think on that, we'll, we'll probably wrap if you're running out of juice. I've run out yeah. of questions and you've given us some really interesting answers. So we'll, we'll, yeah. do, this, we'll do this again, John. I've got a million questions, but yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, I'm going to let you get on with your day, day off and enjoy yourself. And uh, yeah. thank you ever so much for taking the time out for us, man. I really appreciate it. And we'll be yeah, thank yes. you. We're going to go wine tasting now. God, oh, good for you. That sounds for amazing. You. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's such you, a hard life, I know. Yeah. I know. I've got to ask you before before you go then, um, wine tasting, where are you going? Um, you know, have you, have you picked somewhere in specific or are you someone else taking it? Or? No, because we came to see this resort and um, it's, where is the wine tasting place? Um, we're going to be going to Fallbrook, beyond, just beyond Fallbrook. Fallbrook. It's near, it's uh, down towards San Diego. Lovely. It's in between San Diego and uh, Los Angeles. Fantastic. Well, wine is one of the other things that I want to do personally when I'm when I'm out your way. I've not I've not had a chance to drink much Californian wine and certainly not in California. So uh, that's something I'd like to do. So have a good time. Have a great afternoon. And I hope you're not driving. I hope someone else is driving you around. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll we'll taste a few glasses for you. And thank, thank you, you very much, man. Please do. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. But the other, the other thing, like, anytime you want to do another one of these, just let me know. And All right, man. Absolutely. We'll yeah. sort it out. Definitely. It'd be an absolute pleasure. All right, man. Take care of yourself, okay? Enjoy your rest of your day. Have a great day, Thank man. you. My best. You too. Soon. Bye All to right. both okay, of bye. you. Bye.